So when I think of purposeful reporting, I think of, of a report that's done for a specific reason and for a specific target group because you really want to bring that topic out to the forefront. So we're currently um, embarking on a report around looking at health inequalities in this country and looking to see what, what changes have happened and be able to track it over time. So that's very purposeful in terms of wanting to look at that topic and to bring it out to the forefront. If you don't have the data, what you don't measure, you can't manage and, and we don't get action on. So I think that that's part of what our job is, is to look at what needs to be done and to be purposeful about that. Ce qu'on ne surveille pas, ce qu'on étudie pas, peut pas s'améliorer. Les choses ne s'améliorent jamais spontanément. Et la première étape, c'est vraiment de faire le point et de dire où on en est. Euh, est. Ça peut sembler fastidieux, ça peut sembler loin de l'action, mais euh, il me semble qu'il faut commencer par euh, confronter, regarder les données et confronter les gens à la réalité. Euh, c'est une étape absolument incontournable. Kai Hai et CPHI, one of our one of our roles and missions is to uh, collect and produce data that's useful for people out in the community. So we are quite uh, in tune to the fact that we need to bring data as local a level as possible because we understand that that's where the action is. The data needs to make sense to the people who are using it, who are in the communities, and they they see it as can use it in terms of their issues. Partnerships with other sectors, the justice sector, the education sector. Um, the community services sector, and on and on to see if we can pull some of that data into our reporting to inform uh, our understanding of how determinants of health are playing out in local communities and natural neighborhoods in, in Halifax. And it is an exceedingly difficult thing to do. Um, not that the data doesn't exist, in many cases it does exist, but it's often not in a format that can be readily accessed or readily used. Uh, we're learning about data sharing agreements and how we have to put those in place in order to give people the comfort that we A, know what to do with the data and B, can do it ethically. Um, you know, and, and many of, our, you know, many of our, our partners are not used to working with, with other partners uh, is the other thing. So each of the sectors has had sort of their own sets of data for their own administrative purposes, but haven't shared it with anybody, uh, let alone with, with public health. What we're finding, though, is that people are really um, surprised and interested that we're asking the question. The challenge, I think, in Canada is the kind of um, way that you can use data and the kind of data you get at the moment is totally different in a Toronto or a Vancouver or Montreal than it is in a mid-sized city. Um, and it's totally different than our rural and remote and northern districts. And so, you know, I've had conversations with um, people from the far north where you have this minute population spread over a huge district. and you can't ethically work with that data in the same way and you certainly can't publish it because it's too easy to identify someone. So how do we get the same stories out um, when we have to use data so differently? And what are the techniques that we have to learn um, to be able to help data tell a story in a remote district as opposed to an urban center? And I think our data right now we struggle because our data methods are very urban centric. And so we're not as good in the, either the rural or the remote areas yet. One area in uh, Saskatchewan, actually, that looked at the numbers in that report and felt that their immunization rates were low. So they delved into the report a bit more, they contacted us for more information and looked at their local context based on, on the numbers that we had given them and they realized which area in their city was low in terms of the immunization rates and so they were actually able to target and, and for immunization in that particular area and their immunization rates have come up. So they actually used the numbers, delved a bit deeper into their own local context and then used it to, to influence programs within their specific area. So we call that a success story. Cependant, seulement une première étape. Et à la Direction de santé publique, euh, nous considérons que le rapport qui a été fait en 1998, le premier rapport sur les inégalités sociales de santé, a été le déclencheur d'une série d'actions. Mais si on n'avait pas eu des chiffres chocs pour euh, alerter la population et les décideurs, toutes ces actions-là n'auraient pas été enclenchées. Euh, lors du dernier rapport de la Direction de santé publique de Montréal, euh, nous avons décidé d'être un peu plus prescriptif que lors du premier. Donc, mais nous avons quand même gardé cet accent mis sur euh, le, 
la transmission fiable des données rigoureuses, vérifiées, mais pour aller tout de suite un peu plus loin. Donc, le deuxième rapport était un rapport comme tel, mais aussi une série de prescriptions. So we did that report with 18 cities, but we also had data back at the office for 33 cities in the country. So we did data briefs and put them on our website so that then people could just go on and just use the data and take it and use it as they needed to in their local context. So I think what we need to do is, is bring it as low a level as possible, but also understand that we also need a national picture for data because we, we sometimes need to compare across provinces. So uh, being a national organization that CPHI Kai Hai is, we do need to also keep in mind that that national view and what we can do and how we need to compare but also bring it to a low level that people can actually use it for action.